Make no mistake, the Brooklyn Nets were hungry as they entered Friday night's game against the Atlanta Hawks. Sure, they were coming with a win, but their outstanding performance against Houston Rockets, the undisputed heavyweight loser of NBA season, did not inspire much confidence. And something crazier has happened for team that had a two-game win over two weeks than Team Brooklyn had against Miami to stay out of the qualifying tournament. But the stakes looked much higher for the Atlanta Hawks. Regardless, they'd be going in and out Barclays center in middle of the play-in position, but a win would do wonders to get them into 78 bracket instead 910. It seemed unlikely that the Nets would win in this match. Instead, they dominated another third quarter after a fairly equal start. Mikel Bridges was unstoppable, Brooklyn couldn't miss from three, and Atlanta fell asleep at the wrong time, as they've done so often since the Eastern Conference Finals in 2021. Final score Nets 124, Atlanta 107. The defensive intensity Brooklyn needed in this game was there to start. Initially, Hawks couldn't work out Nets' transition plan with Nick Claxton to break ball and stifle flow of Atlanta's attack I really like the early opening of BKN. Hiding the keys a bit, dragging the ATL into slow-moving isolations, blocking offensive streams. A really good start in this respect pick. Twitter 5 bc 4 sqh one a Lucas Kaplan March 31, 2023 that lasted 6 minutes, with the Hawks scoring just 6 points into the game. Then Brooklyn stopped stopping and even though Atlanta didn't break rope deeply and only shot 22 on 4 from distance in the first half, they were one step ahead of Nets on this side. Especially in paint. The Hawks finished the first 24 minutes with 12 attacking boards against Brooklyn's 5. They scored 11 of 13 free throw attempts in the first half, with the Nets missing their only pair. It didn't matter if Trey Young finished the first half by just 2 points and a minus 20 on the field, or rather, he didn't kill Atlanta. His backcourt partner Dejount Murray took the space and hit midi to midi on his way to 15 points in the first half. Noted Nets Bogdan Bogdanovich added 7 points and flourishing Nets Onyeka Okonwu had 10 points and 3 offensive boards. I actually thought we were pretty lucky to even win at halftime, Jock Vaughn said after the game. Just the amount of shots they get from rebounds. For most of first half of the game, Brooklyn Nets didn't seem like a better or more energetic team. They didn't look bad at all, especially when the ball, but better than Atlanta. Well, except for Mikel Bridges. Bridges were poured at 20 points, mainly on jumpers where the entire building was expected to fall at this point. Crime revolved around him. Most offensive items involved Trey Young's man or letting Clint Capella's man watch him and cook. Atlanta began game by generously giving the Nets these keys, which proved to be a cat that Quinn Snyder and his team couldn't put back in bag. It was too late for both defenders and the spectators as Bridges caught a rhythm and rained hellfire on entire arena. Even when he wasn't scoring, the Hawks couldn't protect him Bridges' 21st half points turned 42 on a 24 v 16 shot for the game. Bridges sprinkled some good hits into the rim as well as 5 three-pointers in 8 tries. I mean, he even dropped them. How pick. Twitter kfu 2 y 2 q 5 Brooklyn Nets April 1, 2023 Bridges credited his performance as, just staying aggressive, teammates finding me, coaches making good plays. You know, as usual. Following the offensive output, Brooklyn took a second quarter six point lead 59 to 55 at halftime and never looked back, the fire in Bridges turned out to be contagious. Fiery shots pushed Nets into another dominant third quarter in March, as tight competition from the start turned into a 22 point lead before final period kicked off. Brooklyn beat Atlanta 42 to 24 in the third quarter turning the Barclays Center into a nice old-fashioned Friday night party. They went out and ran in the pass, Nick Claxton threw a few dunks, and the fourth quarter turned out to be largely cosmetic top for Clax attack pick. Twitter 7 r 9 h 2 doozy l Brooklyn Nets April 1, 2023 but maybe we should have seen it coming after the Richard Jefferson show at halftime no one involved in the Nets organization in any way could miss Friday night 33 out of 15 deep and 56% off the field overall. 
Spencer Dinwiddie finished with 12 assists and Nick Claxton finished with 6 shots on 7 and an pristine stat line of 14,125 in 2 blocks. After game, Vaughn described the halftime difference as net slowing down, taking care of their mistakes and valuing what they had. So that was huge. Then we got into basketball. So just 4 turnovers in the second half allowed us to really go downhill, make threes, and the circle looked pretty, pretty big tonight. Bridges echoed head coach's view, saying that the biggest reason for second half comeback was controlling offensive rebounds, and later said, we stopped and got out. Rather than. It's hard to imagine any net disappointed with Barkley's center after Friday night's win. A competitive, fun first half turned into a second half romp, and Brooklyn took another step to avoid the dreaded qualifying tournament. A truly successful night. Personally, for Bridges, the game was another milestone in his development. He later added that, there is always, someday, in the back of my head. Milestone watch Dorian Finney-Smith as 4 out of 6 represented his highest point as a net. Mikal Bridges' 42-point was the third 40-point game of his career, all against Brooklyn. Additionally, he scored more than 20 goals in each half, the 8th and ninth halves of his career. Seven of them arrived in March, eight in total. Speaking March, Mikal Bridges' third month total of 461 is the highest any net scored in March, surpassing John Williamson's 436 in 1978. Kevin Durant scored 471 points last November. Bridges currently averages 20.1 points for the season. The Nets recorded 31 assists on Friday, which represents their second game in a row with more than 30 assists and their third game in the last four. Brooklyn had over 30 assists just once in his first 18 games after the trade line. The ball is officially bouncing in the county. Spencer Dinwiddie's 12 assists on Friday brought his March total assists to 146, highest the NBA this month and highest by a net in any month since Darren Williams dropped 154 cents January 2012. Watch standings the Eastern playoff picture, especially teams 5, 6, and 7, doesn't seem likely to change before the end of the regular season on April 9. The Knicks, Nets and Heat look ready. With 46 points behind Jalen Brunson, the Knicks defeated the Cavaliers in Cleveland on Friday. New York is currently 2-1 slash games ahead of Brooklyn, which has only 5 games left to close the gap. Moreover, Knicks are breaking the tie against Nets. Similarly, Nets are two games ahead of Heat and Nets are tiebreaker in this match. As a result, it looks like Nets won't have to endure qualifying tournament but instead go straight to playoffs and a matchup with 76ers. Zach Lowe knows in his weekly feature film Friday, Lowe's 10 Things, Zach Lowe spoke at length about Mikel Bridges' potential. The Brooklyn Nets are 8-13 since the line, but Mikal Bridges averaging 27 points from 504090 is a big win for Brooklyn regardless of the record. Bridges plays almost 20 pick and rolls per 100 positions, nine times his career rate with the Phoenix Suns. Bridges came close to that number in their final weeks at Phoenix, Chris Paul and Devin Booker injured, but not scoring with precisely that combination of volume and efficiency. This is pretty rare weather. Bridges was part, midi committee, Phoenix and eats there even more Brooklyn, almost half his attempts came from mid-range, one highest stakes league. Getting teeth defense will reveal more profitable passes, and that's next step for Bridges. He was a brazen top scorer in Brooklyn. Now let Bridges stretch herself. This is temporary squad, the remnants of a failed super team, there is no proven number one option and hardly coherent identity. Bridges assisted in only 6.9% of his pick-and-roll games with Brooklyn, a mark that will be ranked 165th for the season among 170 ball possessions that have played at least 200 such games per second spectrum. But like the others, he wonders if Bridges is the first choice. Bridges has proven to be a smart and adaptable player, the more iterations, the more readings it will see and then it will start guessing them. He'll never be a big assist man. He's 26 years old and doesn't have the number one profile of ball handling in a great team. 
But imagine Bridges channeling that experience, that aggression and responsibility, into a secondary ball handling.